or on security. Let's talk to Adnan Kifayat, who joins me with the analysis on the Brussels attack. He was the US Secretary of State John Kerry's representative to Muslim communities. He's now a senior fellow at the German Marshall Fund. Welcome to the programme. On Friday, Interpol released a statement saying they need to make sure that information moves faster than terrorists. And they're saying that tens of thousands of foreign fighters are traveling to and from conflict zones. How important or critical is it that intelligence is shared, not just between countries that have very close borders, but just globally? Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. It is extremely important. And what the Belgian attacks have yet again demonstrated is the slowness with which information does travel. And in intelligence circles, as you well know, as everyone knows, speed is of the essence. Uh, we have open borders in Europe, which is, uh, of course, a foundational uh, of the European Union, but information does not travel just as fast as, uh, as people do. And that is something that really does need to be looked at. You talked about speed, but there's also red tape. Um, Turkey warned about these foreign fighters. Why was Belgium so slow to react to these warnings? What did they face? Absolutely. Turkey, there are reports, uh, the Prime Minister's office issued a report about uh, having sent back a foreign fighter, a Belgian, uh, one, of, one, of, one of the individuals involved here. And it appears uh, that the Belgian authorities did not act on that information. There are also other reports uh, from Hungary, for example, at their border, uh, that, that, uh, that they flagged uh, certain individuals. That also was not acted on. These are issues uh, that need to be looked at by Interpol, but also by uh, the European Union. For a long time, uh, you know, information sharing within Europe has been slow. Within Belgium itself, you of course have the split between uh, the French-speaking intelligence services and Flemish-speaking intelligence services. And within these intelligence services, it is very difficult uh, for them to communicate internally. So that is something that the Belgian authorities must sort out. But it's a larger problem in Europe. And it's also a problem between Euro European countries sharing information with, uh, with American intelligence services. Um, information sharing is something that really does does need to be looked at, and this incident, unfortunately, has brought that into focus yet again. Well, let's look at the terrorists themselves. Why do you think Belgium has become a hub for those who've been radicalized? I think, in part, it is a, a political uh, issue, a political social issue, in the sense that national leadership uh, in Belgium should, uh, should frankly be much stronger about the need for integration, about the need to uh, integrate immigrant communities. Uh, of course, uh, Salah Abdeslam was not an immigrant. He was uh, Belgian-born. But he did find refuge and safe haven in a community that, that has many immigrants in it. I think that there is a sense uh, in many uh, communities, uh, many Muslim communities across Europe, that European leaders don't take uh, integration of Muslims into European society uh, seriously. The vast majority of Muslims in Europe obviously are integrated, are uh, citizens of Europe, are uh, middle class, upper middle class, uh, and there are, of course, no problems. But there are fringe elements, and these are where we see the hotbeds. These are where we see ISIS recruiting. This is where we see a lot of the problems, unfortunately, as we did in Molenbeek. Okay, Adnan Kifayat in Washington, D.C., thank you very much for your thoughts.